Uh, welcome back everyone in this new video tutorial about auto battlers in this video we're going to create a unit sorry for moving the camera so fast maybe it was uh, it was hard to watch so we're going to create uh, our units and we're going to make sure uh, it recognizes uh, our mouse cursor so uh, but first I imported uh, an outline just so I can uh, an we, we can know uh, when our cursor is over on units so you're going to you can download it and you can put it in the exact same folders uh, that I did in your content uh, art shaders outline and you're going to have two materials they are going to be used uh, to outline our units when we hover them uh, and we're going to need to enable the system so we're going to go to uh, project settings stencil Enable enabled with stencil, we're going to specify on the custom depth stencil pass like that. And just to make sure it works, we're going to select that and look for the static mesh components. Uh, I think it works if we stay there. And we're going to type in custom, we're going to check that and put that at 256, uh, two, 251, and it's not working. Uh, it should be highlighted right now, and I'm not sure why it's not highlighted. Mm, ah, I think that because we have to add a post process volume with the with the the material we just added to the project, so uh, this is going to be unbound like that, and we're going to look for uh, uh, how it's a blendable, and we're going to add a new blendable. Uh, post process material asset reference and we want the stuff we just imported so don't worry about all of that that's uh, the, the assets that the units are imported we're going to need that mi outline and i think so it's outli outlined in yellow right now i think no it's not yes it is and i think if we switch the stencil it's going to be highlighted in other colors i think 250 is red. Oh, okay, it's green. I think s I think 252 is okay. It's blue. Uh, anyway, you you have all of these colors accessible in the MI outline. You can see there. So 249 is red, etc. And you can customize that by checking the the box. So uh, we're just going to put that. Yep, to see if it's highlighted in red. So it is. So it's okay, we're going to remove that and we're going to not render the custom pass like that. So we're going to build uh, the lightnings just so we can get rid of the, the boring red text over there. And what are we going to do? We're going to make it so we're going to build a simple animation blueprint that takes care of all of our units. We're going to take care of the we're going to make it so we can drag and drop a units on the map and it is going to we're going to be able to switch from a unit to another with that actor so what do we what are we going to need we're going to need to open up our units and it's going to use a capsule as a base i believe like that we're going to use a skeletal mesh like that we're going to use uh, the skeletal mesh is be going to be minus 90 degrees oriented because it's unreal and we're going and what else are we going to need there mm -hmm. mm, for now it's that that's going to be it and this unit is going to use a unit row uh, and we're going to specify row handle data table row handle is going to be editable we're going to hit compile open that up and specify that it's going to be using a row from the units data table and it's going to be using the default unit by default like that and if we drag and drop a unit onto our map for now we're not going to see anything kp ends to move the thing on the bottom if you don't know so what are we going to do with that unit row in constru 
uh, in our construction scripts, we're going to run a function that set up, sets up the proper skeletal mesh and the proper cosmetic for that unit. So, set up uh, cosmetic, um, set up cosmetic, cosmetics like that. We're going to call that function in our constru construction script like that. And in there, what do we want to do? We want to grab that row. Uh, we want to break. We want to get the data table from that row. And this is going to be our units data table. Like that, we're going to break that. And we're going to say that our mesh is using the skeletal mesh we specified in our data table, like that. And just by doing this, if we go back to our content folder, dt, dt units, if we specify our we specified our footman, then if we go back there, we have our footman. And right away we can we realize the scale of the of the arena is not is is not the correct one, obviously. <coughs> Sorry. And we're going to create our the animation blueprint that is going to run everything so in our art folder we're going to create a new folder called animation and we're going to create uh, you're going to create ah uh, we cannot create one single animation blueprint to rule them all in my case I cannot because all of my character uses different skeletons if I'm mis not mistaken uh, if I'm looking for skeletons yep they are all using they are all using different skeletons so I, I have I have to create uh, a one anime blueprint for each of the of the units I have which makes it which makes me have to we must change uh, our unit structure it's not going to take these things is going to take an anim blueprint uh, anim instance I think it's called and it's going to be a class reference and it's going to be anim instance uh, maybe we're going to crash there no it's okay in our units folder we do not have any animation blueprints for now we're going to create one for our footman so create anim blueprint abp footman like that we're going to keep that selected we're going to go back to units and use the drop down arrow to use that anim blueprint and we're going to open that up we're going to have to add a default slot like that we're going to add a new state which is going to be locomotion like that in our locomotion state we're going to create a new state which is idle and a new state which is going to be jog run it's going to be playing okay well, never mind like that so if we are we're going to promote that to a variable b is moving if we are moving we're going to go from there to there if we are not moving if we are not moving we're going to go back to the idle state in the idle state what are we going to play we're going to play idle anim like that and if we are in our jog run space we're going to create a new asset for that uh, we will not need to create that for now but uh, it's okay we're going to and how are we going to do that we're going oh we have a walk and a run anim perfect so we're going to create a new blend space 1D which is going to be located in our animation folder of the footman and is going to be BS1 uh, footman jog run like that and it's going to use only one axis of course because it's a 1D blend space uh, minimum axis value is going to be yeah, from 0 to 100 I'm not sure about that for now. How, how are we going to set that up? I think that value must be the minimum value, the minimum sp walk speed we specify for that unit. So we're going to say uh, this goes from 
400 to 800 we're going to have only two grid division only one grid division actually and I think we can plug now the walk and the run and we can interpolate from one to the other like that and this is the blend space we're going to use there jog run speed is going to be a variable set up automatically by the by that try get pawn honor, honor get velocity if that's mm, get vector lens Not sure. I want to get the length, the amount of velocity we have. I'm not sure why I'm failing to grab the. Yeah, I want the vector lens. Thank you very much. Not sure why it didn't want me to. So if that's greater than zero, we're going to say, uh, because that's GTH, I think I was typing in GHD, I'm not sure. So like that, if we are, we're going to be moving, uh, actually we're going to do it that way. If that's greater, we are moving. And if we are moving, we're going to store that speed and we're not even going to check we're just going to do it like that and like that it's going to be even better that way we only get it once like that so if we have a speed of 400 and we compile we're not moving why are we not because I think that's not here that we have to we have to set it up here mm, uh, because it's not I'm not sure why it's not working it should be working I think uh, because it's yeah because it's setting that if we uncheck that and if we say 400 and compile okay Yep, we're working. Okay, we have to set them both, of course. Like that. So we have some kind of setup here. So if we go back there, uh, we have to compile the unit, I think. And we have to set what anim instance it's using. I think we have to grab our skeletal mesh. Set anim instance class and is going to be using that using that class I have a, I have a shortcut to compile everything it's F5 it's uh, called refresh all nodes so we have one guy and it looks it, it looks like he's moving I'm not sure why and if we go back to I'm just going to close that for now I'm also going to close that and also that so why are you moving by default did I left that? I didn't left that. Maybe it's considering that it has some kind of speed above above uh, zero. Maybe it's it's at zero point one, for instance. So if we are not moving, we're going back to idle. If we are moving. No, that, uh, maybe that's just it's it's idle animation. Okay, that's just the idle animation. We are not uh, we are not moving. Okay, right. So sorry about that. So we have our units there, and we're going to make him face us. And we're also going to increase that a bit, just so. Is it scaled properly? Actually, how big it? How big is that mesh? I want to see the mesh, okay. The mesh is uh, in Z, oh, four meters wide. Okay, no, that's the, the, the mesh is too big.
that's that's the mesh issue the mesh is too big it's four meters wide if I drop a, a, a one meter cube okay 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 so the mesh is kind of big so how are we going to fix this uh, the better way the better way I think is to say for now it's to say that our mesh is like only 0.5 and we're also going to fix the fact that it's too high above the capsule. The capsule is going to be 60 tall and 30 wide, like 50 wide better. And if it's if it's 60 tall, we have to put minus 60 there. Yep, so it's, it's too big. For now, like that, it's going to be fine. Yep. like that so yeah much better size uh, where does the, the light comes from I feel like the light is pretty pretty ugly so I'm just going to add a skylight and I'm going to make it so so let's reorder that real quick we need a new folder which is going to be light we need we need a new folder which is going to be system and another one which is going to be arena uh, like battlefield more and sky sphere is going to be in light units um, and we have play uh, dev stuff the unit is going to be in dev stuff uh, all our cubes are going to be in uh, battlefield light post process skylight is going to be in light uh, actually post process is going to be nope is going to be in systems player start is going to be in systems like that so all of that is located at zero 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 and where does our light comes where does the light come from we want light yeah like this I think and I think it's not I'm not going to use that sun height yep I want it to be like this a little bit brighter yeah okay uh, directional light I think we're just going to rebuild I'm sorry uh, and I, I want to modify this just because I'm um, we want to be developing in an atmosphere uh, which is clumsy and pleasing to work with not some kind of stuff that's that's not happy so they are not really bright but it doesn't matter for now we just want we just want to detect our mouse cursor and we we're going to be fine for that video so how how are we going to do that we're going to try some the simpler add events on in our unit add events on begin cursor over on end cursor over we want to ask our skeletal mesh to render custom depths on and off and we want the skeletal mesh to have a stencil enabled uh, we're going to set stencil by hand we're going to say it's green for now I think that's 250 so it's not working so is it even de detecting our mouse cursor that's what we need to find out it's not even detecting our cursor so that that may be because our skeletal mesh doesn't have the proper collision settings it has no collision whatsoever so we're going to make that uh, character mesh does it block it blocks camera but not visibility I'm not sure uh, wh what what channel our camera is so we're just going to say block all for now so it's not detecting so we're going to specify that it generates heat event and overlap events. It's not working. So that's kind of strange if we say overlap all. So the other reason may be that uh, the, m the skeletal mesh doesn't have any collision settings. So what does the physics say? The physics says it has collision settings 
So why is, why is it failing to to detect my cursor? I'm not sure. That's pretty interesting, actually. We're going to draw our cursor just so. I'm not sure. Okay, I'm not sure we need the 3D cursor or the 2D cursor here. And that's two ways to debug that. But I think it should react to our begin cursor over anyway. We're going to try that with the actor. So this is the, the same event bo but for the actor itself. It doesn't answer our click and I'm wondering why. Maybe that's because of because the, the collision settings are, are, are lost. If I say block all on the capsule doesn't work either. Mm hmm That's kind of that's kind of strange. I'm not sure what. It must be clickable. It says it needs the clickable interface. And if it doesn't have that, maybe the actor itself. Mm -hmm. I wonder why it's not working. We can do that another way, but it's yeah. We, we're going to do that the other way because, in any case, I believe we will need to do that logic at some point. So, in our um, Auto Battler Player in-game controller, we're going to add that logic real quick. Uh, in the event tick, we're going to call the parent function. Right-click, add call to parent function. That way, we're we're going to call uh, the tick of our player controller if we have one. We're going to create a new function which is going to be get focused unit. And we're going to call that in our tick. And it's not going to be get, it's going to be set focus unit. We'll or find focus units. And we're going to have set focus unit as well. And it's going to take a unit as parameter like that. And we're going to get cur results cursor uh, for objects. Get each result by channel. I don't know what we want. We want to find bone, I believe. And we're going to go back to our unit. Say our capsule is by default overlaps all dynamics. We're going to say our capsule is actually a pawn like that. And we're going to close all that. And in our auto battler player in-game controller, we're going to break that. It results break that, break that. And we're going to check if we have a valid actor. And in our unit, we're going to delete them. We're going to create a new function, which is going to be set focused. We're going to add boolean, which is focused. Go back to our event graph, grab that, paste that, add a branch. And in there, we're going to do uh, things like this. Okay. That's not the cleaner, but it's going to work for now. And if we have, if if we are looking, we are looking for a for a pawn. 
if we have a hit actor we're going to cast it to a unit and if it is we're going to set focused for for an hour we're just going to enable that to see if it works yep it works so we're going to remo remove that print string we're going to make the outline bigger because we do not see it from so far away yep we can see that now and we're so we're finding that focused unit so if we have a hit actor we're going to store that into a variable which is going to be our focused unit so if it is a unit it's going to be our focus unit if it's different from if it's different from the units we were previously focusing like that so that's an actor we want that to be a unit we want to change the variable type this is going to be the unit we focus like that so if we are hitting on hit, if we have something under our cursor, if it is a unit, if it's not the same unit that we were already focusing, we're going to say that we foc we now focus that unit, and we're going to set it focused. So actually, we're just going to say set focus unit like this. We're going to remove that. We're going to create a new function called unfocus unit. we're going to call that here and we're going to call unfocus unit if we have nothing controlled if we have nothing under our cursor like that so if we have so in unfocus unit if we have a focus unit we're going to s tell her to not be focused anymore and we're going to empty that variable and if we s have a unit to focus we're going to tell her to be focused like that and if we hit play yep it's working so we have our units we can do one simple thing before to wrap up that video something you're going to like something fancy if you have several units to several skeletal mesh to use obviously we're going to create a new unit it's going to be called an archer it's going to be an archer and it's going to you and we're going to create uh, the animation blueprint for, for that archer real quick abp archer default slots just so we can play animation montage afterwards we're when we're going to need one new states locomotion in locomotion we need two states idle new states jog run we're going to do that promote that to a variable b is moving like that we're going so fast lightning speed to create that just so to to go closer to the fancy stuff to go closer and faster to the fancy stuff we want the vector lens uh, it's going to be our speed like that we're going to do the exact same thing like this in our idle state we want to play idle in our jog run we're going to create the blend space we need in the animation bs1 archer jog run like that speed 800 400 one grid division it's going to use walk and run like that go back there plug that archer jog run using that speed 
and we're done with this animation blueprint so we can go back there use the archer like that go here and say that now you you are not a default unit you are an archer yep and we have a new unit ready which is going to be using the exact same code logic so whatever we're going to code for that one is going to be coded for that one and we're winning a lot of time there so that's pretty much it for that video which was quite long longer than I expected so hope, hope you liked it and hope to see you in the next one bye bye